Hello and welcome. This is Mouse Gunner, and we're back with some more Factorio, and we're working on everything liquid, it seems like, in this episode and the last. Yep. So last episode, we started creating the lubricant, which is pretty much the main use of heavy oil. You can use it for some other things, but lubricant's the most often what you're using it for. And we're going to get into some of the next things. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about what's going on with our refineries right now, because this is something that new players sometimes get really confused about. So I'm going to take a look here at this top refinery that we have, and I'm going to open it up and you'll see that it is full of crude oil. Now, what often happens with new players is say they're making lubricant or whatever use they need. And they have this nice little setup that we built last episode and they say, okay, great, this produces lubricant, but I'm out of lubricant. Why am I not making more lubricant? They'll open this lubricant machine and they'll see, I have no heavy oil. Okay, that makes sense. I have no heavy oil, so I'm not making lubricant. Then they'll run over here to the refinery and say, okay, I have no heavy oil, why not? They'll look at the crude oil and you'll see, I have 20 crude oil, but I'm not making any heavy oil. Well, why is that? And, and it can be a little confusing. I don't know that it's really adequately explained anywhere, but I'll try to do my best here. And that's pretty much simply, you're not making any heavy oil because you're full of, in this case, petroleum. So every time this refinery operates, it produces all three of these products. It produces heavy oil, it produces light oil, and it produces petroleum. It has to empty all three of them before it can operate again. So you can see in this case, it has emptied heavy oil, it has emptied light oil, but it has not emptied petroleum, so it can't produce anymore because it has no place to put the petroleum that it has to make. And from what I'm seeing, it looks like it produces petroleum at a faster rate too, which is probably why that has happened. Uh, let's see. Because it says 334 for products. Uh, yes, you're right. So that is why, especially in our case, it's it's backed up on petroleum because it's been producing more, and we've been using the heavy oil. So that's been that's been used, and our light oil has just kind of been sent out into these pipes, which is enough that it's not what's backing up our refineries. Our petroleum, we've sent it out in the pipes, but we've just made more. So the pipes are not kind of big enough to to send them out, and so it's backed up into the refineries. So there are a couple ways of dealing with this. The, the kind of best way to deal with it is to use all three of your products in their proper ratios. So as you said, the 334, if I'm making, let's just say 334 per second, let's just say whatever my setup is, that's what it produces. If I consume 334, uh, great, I have no backup. Every, all three of them are consumed and I don't have to worry about it but that almost never happens. I mean, you can try, and some people do build systems that can do that, but your average player is not going to build this perfect factory that consumes everything in the perfect ratio. So that is another use for these tanks. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a tank temporarily back here because we, as you said, are full on petroleum. So if I give the petroleum somewhere to go into this tank, you'll see... We run back here to the refineries. You'll see this little fire is on again. That's kind of their symbol of operation. And they're they're working now because they're not backed up on anything. What I suspect is going to happen here in probably just a few seconds is we'll back up on light oil and the refineries will shut down again because what just happened with the petroleum will happen with the light oil because now the light oil has nowhere to go and it's just going to back up. So let's see if that happens. How are we doing here? Yeah, I bet it'll happen right about now after this. Yep, there we go. So now the refineries are shut down again and you'll open them up. And basically, I guess my tip is if you're confused about why your refineries are shut down, don't just look at the input because you see we're full on input. Look at the output too, because if the output's full, then that that's your problem. You've got, a, you've got an output problem. So, yep, there we go. That's another way to do it. You just kind of drop down another tank this is at least what I would call kind of a temporary solution, but it does the job. 
I don't really like it personally because it puts tanks on the bus and it's, but it does the job. What I strive to do is what I mentioned kind of as the first solution is use the oil products in their proper ratios, or at least use them in a, in a manner that you won't back up. And the way to do that, let's see, I'll go ahead and set up another kind of double here. Now you'd think this would be possibly a light oil, you know, production chain or something. I'm actually going to space this out and not use this at all right now because we don't have the research to do what I want to do right here. This obviously comes with my foreknowledge of, of the game. I know what I'm going to want to do and I'm going to want to do it right here. But I'll go ahead and just kind of gloss over that for now and set up the next one, which will be here. Now this is going to be this little, if you look at the recipes, it's this little gray box with a light fuel, a light, light oil drop on it. This is the manufacturing of solid fuel from light oil. So the, the gray box is solid fuel. And then obviously the yellow is the light oil. So what this will do, we'll go ahead and just connect this one up like this. Oh, and there's no output because this is a solid object. That's right. So this you actually need to output with an inserter. And I'll give it a little power. Fortunately, these aren't long enough to connect. There we go. So oh, I need to actually give it oil. <laughs> there we go. Now, now this one's working, but the inserter on the other side doesn't have power. There we go. So these will produce these little blocks. There we go. I get this set up right. These little these little gray blocks, which like I said, are are the solid fuel. And you'll see if I um, should probably put these in a box so we can pick them up. Um, let's see. I'm actually going to do it this way so I don't have to use another pole. There we go. So I'll just put these in a box and you see when I happen to pick one up, it said plus one solid fuel. And this is what they look like in the inventory. They're just these little blocks. And these will be used a lot once we get down into like rocket fuel and stuff. But for now, they're basically just another fuel block. So if I go get my car, you see my car right now is being fueled on wood. And I have some coal in here and some electric poles. And you can see the fuel value of, if you hover over these each of these items. Wood is 4.0 megajoules. Electric poles are also 4.0 megajoules. Coal is 8 megajoules. Solid fuel is 25. So if you are worried about fuel, you pretty much just need to carry around some solid fuel and you'll be gone for good. So in the late game, I tend to power my trains on solid fuel, my cars on solid fuel, partially because I don't want to chop down wood, partially because I don't really care to be mining the coal, just a, a more efficient way of, of generating fuel. So Out that's of what- curiosity, could this run in some of the other things like um, smelters and uh, the boilers? Yes, anything that consumes fuel to include smelters and boilers. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, yeah, I mean, anything that consumes fuel, you, this functions. Trees function, coal functions, solid fuel is great. Now, it's most people won't use solid fuel in their furnaces. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a funny, like, seems kind of funny to say that. It's perfectly valuable, you know, valid. You can do that. Solid fuel eventually, as I mentioned, is used for the rocket and rocket engine. Uh, the rocket engine consumes rocket fuel and all this stuff. So that's generally the main purpose of solid fuel. But obviously, we're not even close to the rocket engine or rocket fuel now. So right now, this is almost just a consume the light oil so I don't have this backup problem and produce something useful while you're at it, which is this fuel, which I can then, I don't know, do whatever I want with until I need it. I could just store it, but. I could also now, make. I have a question for you then. Mm -hmm. Considering that there's there's three different categories of solid fuel, I'm assuming that the production is all the same. It's the same product. You're just using different types of oil or petroleum to make it, correct? 
Correct. And that's a good point. So they all produce the same thing. I mean, it's a little, I guess if you just look at the icon and you don't really know it, it you not can't be sure, but they are the exact same thing. They look the same on the belt. They're just these little blocks. The, I guess, kind of accepted best use of your oil is to make the solid fuel out of light oil. Again, well, as with many things in this game, people have gone through and done the math, and it's it's kind of, that's, light oil is, is what you make solid fuel out of. Yeah, from what I'm seeing here, it only takes one light fuel to make solid fuel, whereas petroleum gas is two, and heavy oil is two, so efficiency-wise, exactly. it seems like that's a better call. Yep, and eventually, you will unlock the ability to kind of switch types, like um, well, I guess switch is the wrong word. You can, it's, it's called cracking in the game and you will basically lower the level of your product. So I can turn heavy oil into light oil and I can turn light oil into petroleum and there are different ratios and different things about how that works, which we'll get into later. So you can imagine, you know, what if I wanted to make solid fuel out of petroleum, I could take my light oil, turn it into petroleum and then make fuel out of it. But you're still basically dealing with the same, as you said, it takes two petroleum gas to make a solid fuel. It only takes one light. So that is pretty much the main reason using light fuel for solid is your best bet efficiently, efficiency wise. Now I ran out of chemical plants, but then the next thing obviously to do is start using this petroleum. How many do you need for? Uh, I'm currently building five. We'll eventually need a, a, a big handful of them, but just start with a few. Another great reason for solid fuel is to completely remove the need for trees in any way, shape, or form. We've already done that with the medium-sized electric poles. We don't need the trees for small poles anymore. Now we can do it with fuel. Although I guess we already kind of did that with coal, but no more trees. Now I'm just waiting around for my chemical plants to finish. But I guess I can just mention that these four here that I've left blank, that's where I'm going to do the cracking I mentioned. The leftover heavy oil, right now we don't have any, but if I have some leftover heavy oil after I've made as much lubricant as I want, I then want to send in here and turn it into light oil to then be made into solid fuel so that's why i'm leaving the space that's also why i did it here because i kind of want to do all my heavy stuff here and then all of my light stuff here and then all the petrol stuff down at the end so for that same reason i'm going to just leave space with some empty blank ones there and that's going to be my light into petrol cracking okay so the next thing is what do we do with the petrol? Now, if I can find it here, petrol is pretty much used in two different things. The If you look under the intermediate products tab, kind of towards the right, you'll see sulfur, which is this yellow, I don't know, spiky thing. That is a petrol product and plastic, which is also a petrol product. These are pretty much the two things you're going to be using petrol for in the game. You mentioned you can make solid fuel out of it, but we also mentioned that's not, not efficient to do it that way. So what we're going to set up here, I tend to do sulfuric acid or sulfur into sulfuric acid first. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to do this. I'm going to set up a sulfur processing area. I actually need even more chemical plants for this. I'll put them down. If they're not right, go ahead and move them. Sure. Yeah. So this is, again, a, a personal preference thing, but I kind of have a way that I like to lay these things out. So sulfur is pretty much, I think, the only use for sulfur is sulfuric acid. There may be one other thing that I'm forgetting, but at least that we have unlocked right now, the only use for sulfur is to make sulfuric acid. And sulfur into sulfuric acid has a 5 to 2 ratio. Getting back into some of these, you know, ratios that, that you can come up with. So the way I like to do it 
And again, personal preference is... Oh, did I leave myself enough space? No, I did not. This goes back to the leave yourself enough space kind of thing I was talking about. Two, three, four, five. There we go. So I'll set up my five sulfur plants here. And sulfur, just like the uh, solid fuel, is a, a hard object. It's a, it's a thing an inserter will pick up. So you need to kind of do this inserter and I happen to know that sulfur comes out really fast so I need a fast inserter for this so I'm going to go ahead and just take the sulfur out and put it on this belt now like I said as far as I can remember the only use for sulfur is sulfuric acid and it's in a 5 to 2 ratio so sulfuric acid down here will just be made in another chemical plant and that'll look like this and actually I need to leave myself enough space because sulfuric acid can get a little complicated just because it has uh, hard, you know, physical ingredients as well as liquid ingredients, solid ingredients, I guess I should say, struggling for that word, and liquid ingredients. So this will be our sulfuric acid here and here. And let's go ahead and give these some power and start hooking these up so I can show you how I like to do this. Let's see. So on this end, we need some pipes. Let's do water here and petrol there. And you see, I'm kind of using this same one, two output input sequence that I did over on the refineries. Kind of do this, connect all these together. Oops. Okay. I brought water up so you can draw. Great. So, ah, wrong pipe though. One other thing, I guess, one thing that just happened to us is I got water in the pipes that need to have petrol in them. You have to actually dismantle the entire, all the pipes that got, got the unwanted fluid in them for it to actually clear. So let's see, this is water you said? Yeah, okay, good. We'll just do it the other way. Water will be two, petrol will be one. There we go. Connect this up. And then you could get petrol hooked up to this inner one. We will get our sulfuric acid plants running. Uh, petrol, oh, not light. crap. Sorry. <laughs> so, there we go. Petrol. Now, again, we get the... So, this is the um, sulfur. And it's kind of cool. You can see every swing of this inserter will jump two. We were talking a couple episodes ago about our stack size bonus. So, I guess at some point, we've researched a few. So, now, or at least one stack size bonus of one. So this inserter can now grab two things per swing. And that'll obviously go up as we research stack and size bonus. But it's a good good chance to explain that, just I noticed. Okay, so the next thing we need over here is iron plate and water. So this can get a little tricky, and I even tend to forget my layout of this sometimes. So obviously we need to leave some space for an inserter and we also need a longer inserter to grab this one so this is where if you left yourself a ton of space you'd be fine no problem I have tried to be clever and not left myself a ton of space so I'm gonna have to try and work out the best way to weave this kind of in and out Let's see I used to have a really great way of doing this. And I wonder if I can remember. Yeah, there we go. That works great. If we bring water, water in. Down here. Oh, but it's offline. Oh, I can undo it. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. 
Uh, this is... Yeah, this will work. Uh, if I push the right hotkey, I can actually get the item I want. There we go. So now, obviously, I need to branch off my materials bus up here because I actually need smelted iron to make this run. And then, last but not least, connect the outputs. And in just a moment, there we go. So now we have some sulfuric acid. And you'll see this is producing. And in a minute, it'll shut off because of the backup problem. But check these pipes here. We have some sulfuric acid. And so there is at least the first of the two products for petroleum in kind of a nice little compact layout where you can just produce the sulfur and that'll go directly into your sulfuric acid. All right, well, that looks like a good point to go ahead and uh, wrap up this video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. This is Mouse Gunner and Rotype signing out.